Hi there, I'm Corey Driver, and this is Moving Forward. So this week, we are in Matthew 25, and we are talking about party times. The 10 young women who are welcoming the groom. Um, and so to put this in context, this is one of several readiness parables. So Jesus has already, by this time, uh, told us the tale of the householder who would have stopped the thief had he been ready and known what time the thief would come. And then Jesus told the parable about the two servants, uh, the one who does his due diligence and takes care of other servants, makes sure they're fed and clothed uh, and does everything right, and the other one uh, who just lives riotously and has uh, parties and wastes money all the time. Um, and when the master of the servants comes back, the servant who took care of the fellow servants is rewarded and promoted, and the servant who didn't uh, is cut to pieces uh, and thrown out. Uh, so there are these readiness parables about living righteously and being prepared for the return of Jesus. And so to those parables, the parable of the 10 young women, or sometimes the 10 virgins, uh, is told. Okay. We don't know of this tradition of uh, children or young women um, guiding a groom any place, but it's pretty easy to imagine um, in a time and a place, like several places in the world, without streetlights. Uh, if it's not a full moon, it's pretty dark at night. And um, 10 candles would do uh, a lot of good, or 10 oil lamps would do a lot of good in letting you know, oh, this is the house we're going to. Uh, you can see it from a distance. Um, the, you know, 10 flames is a decent amount of light at night, um, especially if the moon is not out fully or there's cloud cover or anything like that. So it makes sense. Um, I think that we should think of these uh, young women as very young women or girls. Um, they're not bridesmaids, right? Like that's, that's our cultural tradition, right? Like the, these aren't that. Uh, these are kids whose job is to hang out and have lamps. So just, all right, come over here, lamp here, party place just here. People are coming. Maybe it's an unfamiliar village uh, to where the husband is moving or the wife is moving anyway. Um, so they're, they're not celebrants. They're not friends of the bride or groom. These are just like kids. These are girls um, whose only job is to keep an oil lamp lit. And so some are prepared and some not as prepared. They all fall asleep. No problem there. Kids get sleepy. I get sleepy, right? No, no blame. Everybody falls asleep. But then they're woken up by cries that the groom is coming. The bridal party is coming. And so this is the crucial moment. Their one responsibility is to be able to light the way for the groom to come to the house for the party to continue. Five trim their wicks and have just enough oil. Uh, the, uh, not a super abundance at all just enough oil to make sure that the bridal party can make it to the house and say, here it is, here's our light, come over this way. Five do not. And so they ask to borrow from those who have enough. Those who have enough say, we just have enough. I don't think they're lying. I don't think they're being mean. Um, they just have what they have, right? And so the five others scurry along to the all night oil salesperson um, who's open, which is cool. Um, they're able to buy some more olive oil um, or whatever oil they're using to light their lamps, and then they come back. But when they come back, they find the door shut and the door locked. They knock on the door and say, hey, let us in. You know, we had to go buy some oil. And now we're back. But the whole point is those candles are no longer needed or the oil lamps are no longer needed, right? Like, you had one job, uh, we say, right? And their one job was to light the way for the groom. And whoever's opening the door or in charge of the door says, away with me, I do not know you. And this should call back um, Matthew 7, when there are those calling out, Lord, Lord, but not doing what Jesus says, right? 
And the response is, away from me, I do not know you. So simply calling out without performing the tasks that we are called to do by Jesus may be met with a shut and locked door, right? The point of this parable and the parables that surround it, uh, we'll talk about others, is that we have to be ready. And the way we have to be ready is through righteous action. Now, oil doesn't throw the party, right? Like oil isn't the groom. There is an invitation to all these girls and they can come join the party, right? Like, come on. We only ask that having been invited, having been included in the party, having been readied for the party, you just keep your candle burning. That's it, right? Uh, and this is Jesus's parable and this is Jesus in scripture, right? Jesus does all the work. You, Jesus does all the inviting. Jesus does all the welcoming into the kingdom. Jesus does everything to get people in and says, you also have a responsibility. Now, that's a little bit rough for some Protestants to hear. It's Jesus in scripture, right? Like, we, we may not be comfortable with this, but Jesus is, right? And scripture is. So Jesus says, your only responsibility is to be ready. And I invite you. I call you by name. I have known you. But if you're going to call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I said, you're not going to be ready at the crucial moment, right? And so we find ourselves in the position of these children. We're invited to the feast. And we get to go inside. And it's the groom's party. It's not us. It's not for us. It's not our wedding feast, right? It's somebody else's party. But we get invited through, you know, no greatness of our own. Nobody's like, oh, these girls are super lamp holders. We got to have them at the party. No, it's somebody else's party, right? And our job is to just hold the lamps and to have it ready. And that's a tremendous grace on God's behalf. And we have some responsibility. So... so let us live according to Jesus's word. Let us have the oil of righteousness and obedience in order to light his way as he returns.